I want to talk about a method for pricing initial public offerings known as a Dutch auction. Now, it can be difficult to set the price for an initial public offering. Um, the traditional way that's done is investment bankers or underwriters take the firms out on what are referred to as road shows. And it's just that. They get out on the road, the CEO, the CFO, other top executives go from city to city and meet with institutional investors such as pensions and mutual funds to try and gauge what their interest is so that they can try and determine how much demand there is and therefore what price to set for their offering. Now, this tends to be quite unreliable. And a few examples. Back in 1995, Netscape was planning to go public, and they were originally going to price their offering at $14 a share. But after going through these road shows, they determined that there was a lot of demand, and they bumped the price up to $28 per share. But this turned out to be still too low a price, because when the stock opened on that first day of trading, the price soared to as high as $75 on that first day. What happens here? Well, the people, the institutions that were able to buy at $28 a share saw a great windfall, but Netscape didn't see any of that money. That is, they left money on the table. They could have priced it higher. They could have priced it $35 a share, $40 a share perhaps, and more of that money would have come to Netscape. Instead, it came to the to the institutional investors that purchased it at 28. More recently, Twitter was priced at $26 a share, and its first opening price was $45.10. So again, they left money on the table. Now, usually there's a little bit of underpricing in an initial public offering, because this makes it easy for, easier for the underwriters to sell the offering. But certainly Twitter could have bumped it up to 30 or $35 a share, maybe $40 a share, and still had the same successful offering. So how can we deal with that? Well, let's take a look here. Is there a better way for doing this? Well, it turns out that in 2004, Google used something referred to as a Dutch auction to price its shares. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, what, you, what happens in a Dutch auction is the underwriter does not set a fixed price for the shares to be sold. What the underwriter and the firm do is they decide how many shares they would like to sell. Buyers bid a price and a number of shares. And what happens is the seller works down the list of bidders and determines the highest price at which they can sell the desired number of shares. So after they determine that price, all bidders pay the same price per share. So sometimes this is referred to as a uniform price auction. And what this does is it encourages aggressive bidding because the bidder is protected from bidding a price that is too high. So they don't have to worry that they bid a high price and that they're going to be stuck paying that price, which is, you know, too, too high. They'll pay what the price of the, the highest price that just um, gives them the number of shares they want to sell. So they're not going to, to overpay, but they will bid aggressively. Hey, let's look at an example. Suppose you have a company that wants to sell 400 shares of stock, and they have the following bidders. Bidder A wants to uh, buy 100 shares at a price of $20. B, 100 shares at a price of 18 C, um, is willing to buy 200 shares at a price of 16 And D, D is willing to buy 100 shares at also at a price of 16 And E is willing to buy 200 shares at a price of 12 So how do we work through this? Well, we work through this this way, okay? If we sum up the quantity here, you can see that A has purchased 100, but now if you take A and B, that becomes 200. They each buy 100 shares. 
A, B, and C purchase 400 shares, and D also wants to bid at a price of 16, wants another 100 shares, so there are 500 shares. So at a price of 16, they've sold their 400 shares. So E is out. E does not receive any shares at all. But it turns out here that at a price of 16, there's a demand for 500 shares. But the company only wants to sell 400 shares. So they have to figure out a way to allocate this. And one way to allocate this is just to take the percentage, OK? There are 400 shares they want to sell. These guys want to buy. These four bidders want to buy 500 shares. That turns out to be 0.80 or 80%. So in this case, we could have it so that each one of these bidders, A, B, C, and D, gets 80% of what they bid for. So A would get 80 shares, B would get 80 shares, C would get um, 160 shares, and D would get 80 shares. And that turns out to be the 400 shares, and the price is going to be 16. And again, E is out of the bidding because they were only willing to bid a price of $12 a share, and that's too low. So this is an effective way for, for the firm and for the investment banker to try and get the correct price as opposed to just picking a price. Suppose they just picked a price of, of 12 for the initial public offering. Well, there were firms here that were willing to pay 20, 18, 16. They could have gotten a better price. So by using the Dutch auction, the firm is less likely to leave money on the table.